Hey guys, so you just bought a Toro Time Cutter. You made an excellent choice and it's just been delivered to your driveway. You may not be the reading type. You did get a manual with this, but if you don't want to read, I'm going to walk you through everything you really need to know about this mower. Basically, first I want to start you off with how to operate it. You have a deck lift here. And as you can see, there's these little black arrows that have your height up cut. It's always advisable to start cutting a little higher and then lower your deck as you go until you find your desired height of cut. You also will find this feature here. This is your smart speed control system. When you're operating a mower, you operate at full throttle, but full throttle also makes the steering at full speed, and that's not always what you want, especially when you're just learning. So this allows you to keep the engine throttle at full speed, and that keeps your blades turning at full speed, but it slows down the forward and reverse speed of this machine to four miles an hour. So that's what I recommend is you start out in this setting. As you later become more comfortable, you can switch to five and a half and all the way up to seven miles an hour. You can just shift on the fly. You don't have to take it out of gear or anything like that. I have the deck all the way up at four and a half. Now, if you notice on this sticker right here, there's a white T and in the middle is an N for neutral. And when the handles are out like they are now, the machine is in park. There's actually an electric brake on this machine and you can hear it. I'm gonna turn the key on. That's the brake going on and off. So these handles have to be all the way out in order for this machine to crank and that will engage the brake. The other thing that you have to do in order to crank this machine is you have to have the throttle all the way up and then passed all the way up and into choke. There are other models in the time cutter lineup that have a separate auxiliary choke mounted here. So you would pull up on that to engage your choke. And then you just simply turn the key until you hear the engine crank. And when it cranks, you wanna back it off of the choke position. It'll go something like this. This yellow knob is to engage your blades. It is an electric PTO switch. It engages a set of magnets on your clutch and connects your engine to your deck belt. It just pulls up for on and pushes down for off. This is also something that has to be in the off position in order for the mower to crank. It's advisable to crank your mower and then position yourself on the driveway or out of the grass or in an area that has very little to light grass before you engage this switch. It's also advised to engage your blade somewhere in the half throttle range. And then once your blades are spinning, then to throttle all the way up. This will help extend the life of your belt. In the front section here, you'll be able to see your fuel level. This is just a translucent tank that allows you to see through the tank. This is a three and a half gallon tank that primarily sits right here. And then it has a fill tube up to the cap and neck here. When this machine came out of the crate, it had a paper tag hanging off of it that was warning you that you don't wanna fill your fuel level up the neck of this tank. So you can look in and see that there's a vertical cylinder. You don't want the fuel to go beyond the bottom of that vertical cylinder. That's all your basic functions here. I'm gonna crank it up and just show you how to turn the blades on real quick. My blades are currently off, my handles are in park, and I'm going to push the throttle up into choke the next thing to tell you would be how to drive a zero turn. The best description I've ever heard for driving a zero turn is it is like driving a grocery cart. When these handles come together, you're rolling freely. So if you press forward, you're gonna go forward. If you pull back, you're gonna go back. And just like with a grocery cart, if you were going to make a left turn, you would do the same motion, same motion for a right turn. If you were gonna back up and go this way, same motion you would do with a grocery cart handle. I wanna show you that real quick. See, right now it won't crank because I left my handles in. So it's not in park, it's just like shifting your vehicle into park. Now that it's in park, it will crank. So I bring my handles in. If I push forward, I roll forward, pull back, I go back. If I wanna make a left turn, anytime I resume my hands to neutral, it stops. 
One thing that's important to get a feel for is a zero turn has incredible maneuverability. And that's what makes it so efficient and productive at cutting your yard. The problem is with wheels that spin independent of each other, you are capable of ripping your yard to shreds. Basically, the way that you would twist your grass and leave a divot is if you left one hand still and just move the other hand. Because this still hand, that tire is sitting still, and this hand that's moving is spinning, and it's gonna twist a hole in the grass just like me doing this. So in order to make a nice clean turnaround at the end of your runs, there's a couple ways to do it. One way would to be to do it like a three-point turn where you pull in, you back up, and then you go on. Or you could also come to a stop and you could move one handle backwards while one handle goes forward so the wheels would both be spinning and not sticking in one spot. There are lots of attachments available for your time cutter. You may not have been told about them on the showroom floor, but one really popular one is a mulching kit or a recycling kit as Toro would put it. With a mulching kit, this discharge chute is held up vertical so it's not affecting your clearance through a tight space. It comes in a little box and it's a series of baffles that goes up underneath your deck in order to chop all of those larger grass clippings into small bits. It's really easy to install and we actually have a video and there's a link above here that will take you to that video that will show you exactly how to install it it can be done in minutes without any tools. Some other kits would be a bagging kit. That would be a tube with a twin bucket bagger that goes behind you. It comes on and off without tools. There's a step up kit so that you have a handle and a step for getting on and off of your machine. There's an hour meter kit that clips in right here so you could keep track of your service intervals and your hours and many others. There's a canopy kit to get all the sun off of me. All right, that's everything I need to show you from the seat. Now we gotta come in a little closer to show you some other bits. This is where your quick connect washout port would hook up. That is a fitting that comes in your manual pack, it screws onto your hose, and then it quick connects onto your deck. Then you turn your water on at the faucet, and while the water's flowing, you crank your mower and you pull up on that yellow switch to engage your blades. It will use the blades and the water to clean out all the underbelly of your deck. That is not always necessary. It depends on the soil, the grass, the moisture content, the climate, the amount of sand. In a lot of areas, if you just simply feel up underneath your deck and it's dry under there, then you don't really need to bring water into play. All right, as we come around the side, it's one, you have a hitch. It comes standard and you can hook up to many different little carts and sweepers, but you don't wanna have too much tongue weight or you'll have the front wheels of the cart come off the ground, especially if you have any hills on your property or you'll lose your traction. If you lift the seat, you have a nice little tether that holds your seat vertical. For many people, they're gonna have a dealer like us do the service on this machine, but you still should know the lay of the land. You still should be cleaning the underbelly of this and making sure there's not too much debris piled up. Under your seat, you have a battery to make sure that your uh, terminals are tight. You have your solenoid right after that, and then you have your electric brake. Just make sure they're all free of debris so that you don't get corrosion. You also get a little glimpse of your hydraulics. This has a ZT2100 Hydro. These are sealed hydraulics, and you never have to service them. They will outlast the rest of this machine, we promise. We never see them fail. If you ever run out of gas or you have engine trouble, if for some reason your machine will not move, you have to release both the electric brake and the hydros. And it's a little tricky, but we have a video to help you locate those items and release them, put them into neutral. There's a link for that video in your top right hand corner of the screen now. Then when it comes to your engine, this video owner's manual is general because this applies to about 10 models that all have different engines. So on your engine, you'll find a yellow cap and this is your dipstick. You just twist and pull up and it has a full line and you want when you dab it for the oil level to come to that top line. This particular engine also has this style of drain valve that you twist and pull. Some of the other models have a hose that routes the valve out away from the engine. You also have an oil filter located on the other side, and during an oil change, that filter needs to come off and be replaced with a new one. You also have an air filter with two little Tommy knobs holding it down. We'll take a look at that. You just get one of these from your local dealer, slide it right on, and put your air box back on. Your spark plug is underneath this cap here. 
This requires a long well, like a long socket like that, three quarter inch to get in there and remove that plug. This video is not for getting real specific. I just want you to have some general ideas of how to service your engine. A service for this machine or any of the time cutters would include an oil change and oil filter, a new air filter, a new fuel filter, and a new spark plug or spark plugs in the case of a twin cylinder. Then a greasing of the front wheels, a new set of blades, and a general overall cleaning and adjustment. We recommend that you do a break-in oil change on your engine, and that's in 15 hours. That's just your first oil change. After that 15 hour, then you would have to do it every 50 hours. Most people are cutting their yard about 35 times a year. If you had a yard my size, you would cut for about an hour. So you'd put about 35 hours a year on this machine. If you just made it a rule, I'm going to change my oil once a year, you'd be doing it ahead of time and you'd be in good shape. But just for peace of mind, if you wanted to add an hour meter, it would keep track of it and it would tell you exactly when you need to change your oil. The recommended tire pressure is 12 to 15 pounds in your rear tires and 25 pounds in your front tires. So the last thing I want to show you is where your model and serial number are located and also where a QR code is that takes you to a digital owner's manual. They're located on a white sticker on the left side of your machine next to where your motor mounts. If you just pull out your smartphone camera and aim it down at the QR, and then click the link that appears on the screen. It will take you to the Toro website, to a page specifically all about your model. And it will have parts manual, paper manuals, an accessories page with all the different accessories that are available for this machine, as well as a product detail page. And in here you can get which engine, which spark plug, which oil, how much oil, all the little things you wanna know about it. All right, guys, that's the overview on the Toro Time Cutter. An excellent machine for a homeowner with up to a two acre yard who's going to use it once a week. If you want to see some other videos with this mower and other time cutters performing, we have lots of videos. There's some links here in the top right hand corner of your screen. Click those links and uh, it'll take you to one of those videos now. That's everything you need to know about how to operate it safely and take care of your engine. We hope this is going to be a wonderful machine for you. When you have servicing needs, call us with any questions. We're always here for you. If you're liking our videos but you're not seeing what you want to see, drop them in the comments below. We'll make them. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Put any comments you have in the comment section below and keep watching. We got more videos coming out all the time. Thanks so much for watching. Okay, let's go home.